Hi there, Dr. Dickon Weatherby from Optimal DX and the ODX Academy, continuing our journey into electrolytes with another functional five. So we've talked about sodium, we've talked about potassium, we've talked about the sodium-potassium ratio, and now it is time to talk about chloride. So chloride is the principal extracellular anion existing in extracellular spaces in the form of sodium chloride or hydrochloric acid. So what is an anion? It is a negatively charged ion, and chloride actually represents roughly 70% of negatively charged electrolytes, and it's under the same influence as sodium, and similar conditions are going to affect cerium chloride levels. So what do I mean by that? I'm coming back to our good old friend aldosterone. You should be really sick and tired of hearing about aldosterone. But basically, aldosterone uh, causes the body and the kidneys to hold on to sodium. Um, so increasing levels of aldosterone, the body holds on to the serum sodium, decreasing the amount lost in urine. Therefore, serum sodium goes up and urine sodium goes down. Now, the same thing is true for chloride. So the kidneys hold on to chloride. Uh, we got a decrease in urinary chloride. This is something we can actually measure in the urine. So if you're interested in doing urinalysis and that sort of thing, I talk about it in my in-office lab testing book, but that's a different uh, topic altogether. But basically, aldosterone will cause the body to hold on to chloride, and therefore we get increasing chloride levels. Same thing would be happening with decreased aldosterone levels, decreased uh, serum sodium, decreased serum chloride. So where does chloride come from that we have in the body? So most of the chloride that we get is in the form of table salt or sodium chloride. Uh, we uh, consume roughly 6 to 12 grams of chloride in a day. And as I just mentioned, um, the regulation of chloride in the body is under the influence of the kidneys. Now let's talk a little bit about the functions of chloride in the body. So chloride helps maintain cellular integrity. It influences osmotic pressure and also the movement of fluid and minerals through the cell membrane. It is just like the other electrolytes essential for healthy acid-base balance. And here's something that's very important. It's crucial for the synthesis of hydrochloric acid or HCl. There, there's your chloride molecule um, in the parietal cells of the stomach. So let's talk about some of the clinical implications. What are the Im clinical implications of an increased chloride? Well, uh, it's also associated along with sodium and potassium and uh, increased red, red blood cell count, hematocrit and hemoglobin in dehydration. But something else we need to pay attention to is its role in looking at metabolic acidosis. Um, Typically, the, the main uh, element or biomarker that we're going to look at in terms of metabolic acidosis and alkalosis is CO2, and we'll talk about that in a future presentation. But basically, chloride levels, if you see increased chloride levels, they are associated with uh, a metabolic acidosis, and you are going to see the CO2 levels will be moving in the opposite direction. Uh, chloride and CO2, in terms of acid-base balance, tend to move in opposite directions. So metabolic acidosis, we're going to see an increased chloride, and we're going to see a decreased CO2. What about a decreased uh, chloride level? Well, we just discussed how important chloride is in the formation of HCl. Um, when we see a low serum chloride, we're going to want to look at low stomach acid or a condition called hypo. Chlorhydria. It's actually quite a common condition. I talk a lot about it in my FBCA mastery training program. We go through a lot of patterns of looking at hypochlorhydria, and we also have patterns for hypochlorhydria built into the ODX application. So how would you know whether you have hypochlorhydria? Well, typically it's going to be related to digestive problems. You're going to have bloating. You're going to have gas. You can have a sensation of feeling full after even a small amount of food, especially a protein-rich food. You're going to have brittle nails. You're going to have brittle hair and generally going to have a, a indigestion and uh, belching and bloating and that sort of thing. So associated with low chloride levels, there are other biomarkers that are associated with hypochlorhydria, but uh, for a trend towards hypochlorhydria, one of the biomarkers to take a look at is serum chloride. 
So that's our quick little journey into chloride, part of our functional five know your biomarkers section. Um, next time we'll talk about CO2 or bicarbonate. If you're interested at all in what we're doing over at Optimal DX, please come visit us, optimaldx.com. Get a free trial uh, to our uh, software program if that's of, of interest. We also have an eight-day FBCA or functional blood, blood chemistry analysis crash course, completely free. It's where I talk about why functional blood chemistry analysis is one of the most essential functional medicine tests that you can run in your practice. So my name is Dr. Dickon Weatherby. Take care.